Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to check out the GK3V Mini PC. Sorry! Wow, magic hands. Let's try again. Oh yeah. Alright, let's uh, take a look around this box. There's a whole lot of nothing except an Intel logo. On the side we've got us written on it. That means it's a US power supply. On the back we have some specs, but we'll check them later. Alright, let's open her up. We know there's Intel inside. It's got a bit of weight to it. It's not like one of these very cheap boxes. But overall, looks pretty clean. On the bottom again, we have the specs. I got the cheapest model, which set me back 165 US dollars. The manual is actually quite thick in multiple languages. It's not just English and Chinese, but who cares? Boy. This also comes with a HDMI cable. Power supply. And hidden at the bottom of the box is a monitor mount. Let's check the box at all angles. Here's from the front. The bottom is a light. You can tell if it's on or not. On the side, we have one USB 2, two USB 3 ports, micro SD slot, and also a power button. On the back, we have uh, one of the lock things that no one cares about. An audio hole, LAN, two HDMI ports, USB 2, and DC power input. At the top, the thing that looks like a switch is actually a lever that allows you to open up the top, much like a bonnet of a car. On the other side, we have a VGA input. That's it. For the size comparison today, we will compare it to a toothbrush. The width and length of the box is approximately 9 tenths the length of a toothbrush. Not many people have one, so let's compare it to some more common items. Something that everyone has, a Nintendo Game Boy. It's almost double the size. Remarkable. I know some people don't like Nintendo, so how about one of these babies? Yeah. Smell it. Let's take a look at some of the specs. Under the hood we have a quad-core Intel running at 2.7GHz. GPU is an onboard Intel 600 which is good for 3 monitors and 4K is supported at 60Hz. OpenCL 4.4 and DirectX 12 is supported, as is Vulkan. We're given a generous 8GB of DDR4 and also an onboard M2 SSD. There is an area for an additional SATA 3 2.5 inch drive. To use this mount, we need a monitor with VESA holes. They make it go faster. Once screwed in securely, we can easily attach the mini PC to the back. I will run the sound from the audio port. If you use a sound from the HDMI cable, you may run into some issues on certain games. We will also use this wireless Logical K200 for mouse and keyboard input. On the first boot, we're welcome to a clean installation of Windows 10 Professional. This can be updated to the latest version, no problem. But remember, this is a clean system. No games, just Windows 10. Using the Ninite website, ninite.com, we can quickly download and install many pieces of free software at the click of a few buttons. This is Chrome, Zoom, Discord, Office, Media Monkey. After downloading and updating, 86 gigabytes free. Let's check out some benchmarks. This is from Geekbench 5. And here's Crystal Mark Disk Mark. It shows the speed of your M2 SSD. Internet browsing? No problem. We can use up to date software and shop to our heart's content. Mmm.
Using video streaming platforms such as Netflix and YouTube, there's a breeze for this system. Microsoft Office, if you want it, you can use it. This machine can handle both Microsoft Office or any other alternative. Here's LibreOffice. Okay, so for light usage, we're good. But let's check how this can run for a few games. Here's Streets of Rage 4. And Among Us. Okay, let's get a bit more demanding with Undertale. Oh, this is handling it really well. Okay, jokes aside, let's check out some more 3D titles. This one's Street Fighter 4. And to get this one moving at a good pace, we had to lower the graphics settings dramatically. I also tried King of Fighters 13. Had to turn off background animation, or we get very low frames per second. It's fair to say that recent 3D games on Steam are not for this device. How about emulation? Well, here's Duck Station, running at semi-decent settings at 720p. And you know what? It's not bad. Moving on to p p p p p p p p this is the Vulcan backend running at uh, 1 to 1, so it's 1080p. It's Outrun 2. And a bit of Tekken 6. We can load up some Redream. This is Marvel vs. XCOM 2. Enemy unknown. And Virtua Tennis. We also tried some PS2. Games like Gradius 5 can be playable. But running more demanding games like Burnout 3, well, we're gonna have a bad time. 3D games do not run well. Moving to N64, not bad. Remember, we're on a PC, so we have many emulators to try out, each with their own settings. This one here is Project 64. Would you like some GameCube? At the starting line, we only have around 35 to 40 frames per second. Slowly moves towards 60, but it's not really playable. Lesser demanding games such as Mario Kart Double Dash work a lot better. So, arcade games such as MAME on the other hand. Oh baby, Killer Instinct 1 and 2. Yeah. What we're looking at here is the next generation of Atomic Pie. I can see this going in a few arcade builds. Remember Killer Instinct, Killer Instinct 2, and also Tekken Tag Tournament run terribly on either Android or Raspberry Pi systems. Another thing that sets this box apart is that we have a Sega Model 2 emulator. We had to use the legacy graphics mode setting to speed this up. And how about some Sega Model 3? If you're looking at this direction when it comes to arcade emulation, I think it's safe to say that this box will be very hard to beat in its price range. So, 
who is the target audience. Well, it'd be great for the casual user to renew an aging PC or even a business with many monitors gathering dust. Arcade gamers will also love added compatibility. This will be all right for retro gamers, provided they don't need any heavy 3D action. Remember, this small box can even handle the huge backlog of Windows titles. This is not for the pro gaming market. Those in need of an eSports machine look elsewhere. Do I like it? Yes, it's a neat little box for my monitor's back. At around $165, this certainly can hold its own. For anything to come close, you'd have to dig into the used PC market. This machine is silent unless it's under load. And even then, the fan is not too loud. It's quite typical for a mini PC this size. So we need to take out this screw, which acts as a lock, pop the hood, and we can see the two and a half inch drive bay. The surrounding area is plastic and not copper. Inside's not much to look at. The M2 chip is up the top. Much like a laptop, the CPU and the GPU is hidden under the shroud of heatsink. So after seeing Wicked Gamer and Collector's video on the Super Console X PC, how about I bung on Batocera? Now this is amazing. This is the way to have it if you want it slapped into an arcade cabinet. If you want to see a follow-up video on this, please comment below. And if you want to buy one of these, please check our affiliate links in the video description. Anywho, I'm Yimmy Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you in the next video. Ta-ra!